Music, love, and food are the only things that you correlate with memory for the rest of your life, right? It's a universal language. And the memories that I have with music are my mom making me sing Boys the Men, hitting Wanye notes, singing the lyrics inside the cover CD. That's before some of y'all age, but there used to be lyrics on inside of the albums. My father playing 50 Cent, pulling up to the school, 12 dudes deep, 12 kids deep, pulling up. And the one thing I want to encourage all the other artists is let's make music that we can look back on, that kids can look back on, this new generation look back on. And it creates memories, man. Great memories. This is a memory, this is something that's going to go down in history forever. So my music story started out when I was just a little kid. I was originally from East St. Louis, Madison, Illinois area. And although it was a rough, rough neighborhood, my mom always made sure that we were good and, and distracted with good music, R&B music, uh, just a lot of 80s and 90s R&B music. And then of course my dad was into hip hop and, and rap and Tupac and just all types of <laughs> music. And then we moved here and I really kind of fell into it with elementary school. Um, my teachers noticed right away I was the only bass, which was crazy for a kid to be in alone, alone in a section. I just had a microphone by myself. We actually got Anthony Rapp to fly out and see the show. He saw me, I got to meet him, have a great conversation with him. He then flew a couple of us out to New York to audition, which was amazing uh, to see that whole process and be a part of that in New York. Um, and then got back and I just fell in love with being on stage. Crow Cooks, Andy at Sauce Factory, they kind of gave me the space to work. Wanted to keep recording and so I went to T1 Studios where I met Tone the Boss. They had Tone and I were recording, I'm pretty sure it was Can You Feel That. He's like, you got something. He's like, I think you should be doing this. I was like, no, nah, I really just want to make a CD, you know, for my kids when they grow up, kind of like a bucket list thing. And he's like, no, man, you really need to do this. And so ever since then, it just, he's pushed me and helped me grow and helped me become the artist that I am. And now that I'm working on the second album, it's, it's going and it's growing and I'm super thankful and I'm blessed for everybody who's helped me from middle school all the way up to this point and ongoing. Just knowing how many other strong vocalists there are and how many strong artists there are in Iowa and to be called the best and be nominated and then be uh, granted the trophy for best R&B artist was life changing. It was one of those moments where, okay, I've gotten this far, I've, I've been through the mud, I've, I'm still working, but it's nice to be recognized. But now, that quickly went away. I remember my mom looking at me, like, hugging me, and she looked, whispers in my ear right away, she said, you know they're all gonna be coming for you. So now you gotta work even harder, you gotta work twice as hard, you gotta make sure you hold on to the crown. And so, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm super honored and I'm blessed, and I'm very thankful to be recognized, but now it's time to go twice as hard and make sure people understand why I got this award. And it comes with like an identity crisis a little bit of like, do I deserve this? Am I supposed to be here after, you know, just starting out, but then there's also that look back on how hard I've worked and what I've done to get to this point and where I was mentally, spiritually, emotionally one year ago, two years ago, four years ago to how I'm able to put that into my music and, and kind of create this Tevin Jones, best R&B artist person. <laughs> it's really amazing to be a part of the foundational parts of this Iowa music scene because especially, and I can't, I can't say it enough, tone like doing that Iowa Music Awards and being able to be a part of something like that and see it in real life. People are gonna be talking about this for the next 100 years. And it's gonna be the 100th annual Iowa Music Awards and people are gonna look back and tone's gonna roll up on his wheelchair or something, I don't know how 
good science and health will be by then. But to be able to like look back and say, hey, I was a part of history. And when they start doing these documentaries and your name gets brought up, the first ever R&B artist of the year, Tevin Jones. Like, and then you get, you're, you're a part of history forever. And it's truly, truly incredible to, to live it and see it. Like it's, it's amazing.